CWPA Remote Professional Edition, where we take a look at water polo players and where they are today. This woman was a member of the University of Washington Huskies Women's Water Polo Club team from 1999 to 2003. After graduating with a degree in communications and a minor in political science, she began her career as an investigator. And now she's the proud owner of her own private investigative firm. I'm very pleased to be joined today by Vicki Balzarini. Vicki, thanks so much for appearing today on CWPA Remote. Thank you for having me, George. So how and why did you end up choosing Washington? Well, I am a Washington native. Mm -hmm. And I, I had actually considered uh, the move to California to play water polo, uh, lo and behold. Um, looked at a couple schools down there, but ultimately UW offered me everything I needed and uh, with in-state tuition, so you couldn't beat that. You can't beat that savings. Uh, what was your very first practice like? Oh gosh. Um, so that would have probably been sometime in the fall of 1999. I joined the UW water polo team and it's a club team, part of the CWPA. And I was immediately impressed. We had a pretty amazing coach my freshman year by the name of Steve Kilpack. And I'd like to say he was kind of one of the gurus of water polo in Washington. Um, just a really laid back, uh, philosophical kind of guy and he taught me a lot uh, my my one of my first coaches actually had been one of his uh, players too so um, kind of a small community in Washington I think of water polo people so my my first practice was with Steve and I immediately started learning a lot from the older players on my team and just had a lot of fun we practiced uh, anywhere between like three or four nights a week at the Peckhead Pavilion Pool. Mm -hmm. And how about your first game? Do you, do you remember what happened in that? Oh gosh, I'm trying to think back to freshman year, my first game in college. It probably would have been against one of our competitors that we had in the league at that time, which I think consisted of Oregon, Oregon State, Simon Fraser, actually out of uh, British Columbia, was mm -hmm. in our league at that time. Um, Western Washington University had a team, and I believe there might have been another school in Oregon. I'm trying to remember. So that was our division, and it most likely was against one of those schools. And do you remember your first goal? No, I don't. <laughs> Not in college. <laughs> no surprise. Uh most of us don't. Um, what is your single best memory of your, you know, what water polo career at Washington? Well, one of the, I have a lot of good memories, but well, probably the most, no the most uh, memorable would be winning the national collegiate club championship my freshman year at uh, University of Arizona. So that was a pretty tough weekend. And my friend, uh, Stephanie Martin, who I was, chatting with was on my team uh, that year. She was actually a graduate student. So one nice thing about, you know, the club opportunity is you can be a grad student and be going to uh, and playing on the team. So she was one of our leaders and she reminded me that Steve, our coach that year, had told us if we, you know, played really well, we'd have time to relax in the sun. Well, we were so tired at the end of the <laughs> tournament after all the hard games and winning and we didn't, we didn't have much interest in laying out in the sun. <laughs> really? Well, 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 talk about that tournament. I mean, that's an incredible achievement. National champions uh, doesn't happen very often with teams outside of California. So talk about that weekend. Well, you know, my team was graced with people that came from, I think we had a swimmer on our team. We had people like Stephanie who had played previously on other club programs. I think she came from the Gators in Florida. And we had some really talented uh, goalies and whole set, whole defense. We pretty much had all the elements and everyone was fast. So we had a great um, counterattack 
that I still teach. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I haven't coached in a couple years, but it is the counterattack that I taught to my high school girls and, and made them swim a lot in order to be successful at it. You know, you square out here and then you pass it across and then they pass it to the middle. Mm-hmm. So that, that I think quite possibly might've been one of the plays that helped us win that championship. What was the toughest game? Uh, you know, I know we played university of Arizona, but I, I, I actually don't recall who we played in the finals because it's been <laughs> so long. It might've been, I maybe, you know, I don't remember. Well, we can always I'd have to look back. back. Yep, yep. <laughs> Get in touch with somebody and, and maybe look it up. So uh, any disappointing events in the water polo realm at, at Washington? Oh, yeah. And, and quite embarrassing, actually, too. So after that first year, we had quite a bit of success. You know, Washington was ranked. And so the next year, we graduated some of our strong players. And, um, you know, also, we were brought on with a new coach, Mike Wallen, I believe, that year. Um, and we got invited to go to the University of Hawaii for their tournament. They paid for our flights and everything to come out there. And we fortunately had a couple girls on the team that all lived, uh, their parents lived in Honolulu. So we had three different homes to stay at. So we, our, our flight was canceled, though, once we got to LA. And so we stayed overnight in LA and then we arrived at the University of Hawaii pool literally like a minute before we would have had to forfeit to University of Southern California. So we got there, you know, threw on our suits, hopped in the pool, and we're playing one of the best teams in the nation who have the top scoring score of the Olympic game, the Russian team for the Olympic games earlier that, um, I think it was in 2000 that she had played. Mm -hmm. So this would have been spring of 2001. And uh, Stephanie Martin got ejected a couple times on hole D the first half and we were getting ejected left and right. And it was a swim meet. We we're all tired and got crushed by like 20 plus points. <laughs> so that was probably one of the more funny and embarrassing moments that I recall. All right. Well, I'd like to hear your reflections on, on your overall career. Uh, just anything that you found important, profound, uh, even things, um, you mentioned one embarrassing thing, anything amusing happen along the way? You know, I, I think that playing club water polo offered me the best of all worlds because I was able to do other things in college as well and be kind of a well-rounded uh, student athlete. Uh, I was able to be an officer in my sorority. Um, and also be captain of the water polo team and have internships and succeed in school all at the same time. So I think it was, um, you know, unique opportunity to be a student athlete, but also, uh, you know, participate in, in Greek life as well. Right. Well, before we get into your current situation, uh, tell us how you got into investigation. An internship. My senior year of college, a, a girlfriend of mine that I grew up with uh, had an internship at an investigations company. This was shortly after 9 11. Mm-hmm. And the US government was hiring a lot of investigators to help uh, implement their public trust and national security uh, background investigations. And I secured an internship at this company. And after I graduated, got a full time position there. So that worked out very well. Um, So you've worked for some pretty top level governmental agencies along the way. Uh, Can you highlight a couple of them and, and, and some of the things that you did? Right. Uh, During my full-time career at U.S. Investigation Services, uh, which unfortunately is no longer, I learned the ins and outs of what was called the Office of Personal Management. So it's basically the HR for the government they hire and clear the work staff. That agency has since been renamed and changed hands and now I believe is actually going under Department of Defense, but learned a lot along the way, interviewed 
thousands of people, uh, wrote thousands of reports, um, learned lots of interesting things about how people work. <laughs> and uh, it's now led me to opening my own business, mm -hmm. which is uh, Blue Eagle Security Solutions and reissuing my private investigative license. So I do now private cases and public sector uh, government work as well. So did you ever run into any situations while you were working, you know, in the government uh, with regards to the investigations that you did that you weren't expecting? Well, you know, one thing that water polo probably taught me was to be able to improvise. And I am constantly improvising in my job. You know, I have people do strange things, say strange things, make my job difficult, um, you know, be reluctant to cooperate. And I have to improvise and be creative. A lot of times I use humor to try and put people at ease. And I did that in the pool too. Usually I joke with my opponents, especially if they're being, you know, a little bit catty or, or jerkish to, to try and, you know, kind of get them to calm down or keep their eyes on the ball, in other words. So uh, I've, I've, I've joked with subjects of my investigations. I, I once had a gentleman who I was doing a background on who told me he had been caught with some inappropriate material on his computer at work. And at the end of the interview, I think he was feeling, you know, uncomfortable and he had asked me hey you know have you ever found Jesus and he tried to switch the topic to me and so in order to get the topic off me I said well you know I didn't know he was lost <laughs> so you know I, I've, <laughs> I've had to say some you know funny things to kind of you know bring things back to you know why why are we sitting in this interview why are we here we're not here to talk about me we're here to talk about you so um unique situations that I think uh using humor or, you know, my competitive nature of having had played water polo has helped me. Right. Well, you mentioned people doing strange things and saying strange things. So you don't have to name the person or the time or the scenario, but what's the strangest thing somebody ever did? And what's the strangest thing somebody ever said? I was down at an Air Force base once time on detail for the month. So when I was working full time, we would periodically travel to help other locations and knocked on a door of a lady and she was jogging in place when she answered her door and said, I can't stop right now. I have to keep going, but come on in. Okay. So I followed her into her house and then I follow her upstairs to her bedroom she gets back on the treadmill and keeps running and has me do the interview. But it was just, it was strange that this stranger would, I mean, she barely looked at my ID and then invited me up in her master bedroom. Wow. <laughs> so people, people are funny. People are interesting. And that's definitely a memorable experience that I've had. Yeah, that would be. And strangest thing somebody ever said to you? Oh, not that, I, not that I can think of right now, but there's so many. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you're at your own firm. Uh, I like to go into the why. So why the move to have your own firm? I think the autonomy, being a working mom and having the ability to say yay or nay to projects and being able to be there for my kids, but also run my own business and be my own boss is pretty much as good as it gets. I can't think of a better situation to be able to manage my time and work on what I want to work on. So what kind of projects do you like to work on now? You know, I like unique challenges. Uh, attorneys or other clients will call me every once in a while with a unique research challenge or problem that they're having that they're trying to solve. And I like to try and help them solve it. Okay. So Take us through what a typical week uh, for uh, you uh, as it relates to your business. Well, you know, things have been a little different this year. <laughs> I was going to be asking about that next. So, but that's fine. <laughs> Go right there. Yeah. 
you know, I, I've had to juggle a lot, just like you've seen, you know, I, I might be on the phone or whatnot. And my, my kids come into the office and just, you know, interrupt. So I've had to improvise there too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm a part-time worker. So usually I work about three days a week and during the day when my kids are at school and I typically go out in the field and I'll do interviews with subjects and sources of my investigations. These are usually government cases that I'm working. And then in the afternoons, I'll typically go home and report what I've learned. And then, you know, a few times a month, I have a private case where I'm typically doing research or uh, open source investigations online for attorneys and other private clients. I occasionally do process service um, and witness interviews, uh, but th those are a little less often. That's kind of a typical week for me. And do you ever do any of the uh, movie classic uh, private investigator following the husband or wife uh, to, to see <laughs> if they're having an affair or not? No, I don't do any domestic uh, PI work. Uh, I actually don't do surveillance right now, but I used to do a lot of personal injury surveillance at my old firm. So uh, I got my years of surveillance work done there, mostly waiting to watch people who uh, claim to have certain injuries that right. may or may not actually have them, waiting for them to lift that heavy box in their driveway so I can catch it on camera. Yeah, when they, when they when they've said their back got thrown out in in the collision and they're collecting uh, insurance, right? Right. So your your children are in school, but I, I take it not full time. So a few years down the road, when they are Monday to Friday in school all day, where do you see Vicky being? You know, I see myself expanding a lot more into the private sector, marketing myself a bit more in that area. Um, it's, it's more profitable, I would say. I, I have the ability to, uh, you know, charge a little more on the private, private side due to the fact that I have bills to pay too for my business. So um, I need to do some more marketing and things of that nature. And I'll have more time to do that to, you know, stop by, introduce myself to attorneys and and other businesses in the area that might need my services. And are our attorneys a main conduit for you uh, to getting new business? Yes, uh, attorneys. And then I've, I'd also love to do background investigations for companies and small businesses that might be hiring and looking to clear their staff before they bring them on. Well, there are a couple of quite large companies in your area as well. Yeah. You know, typically the bigger companies have in-house, mm -hmm. but I, I find that the smaller businesses are usually the ones that need help because they don't have an HR person right. uh, to do that for them. And how so, would they find you? They would find me either on my website, which is www.blueeaglesecuritysolutions.com, or you can email me at blueeaglesolutions at gmail.com. Okay. Well, that's pretty simple, but... That's assuming they knew Blue Eagle even existed. Uh, you know, I own a small company. I'm, I'm trying to figure out whether this person who came in for an interview, I think I want to hire uh, as my accountant and I need to trust my books with them. Uh, and I go, you know what? Maybe I should get somebody to look into this person a little bit before I do the final, uh, you know, inking the contract. How would I find Blue Eagle? I guess I hope that they would find me through Google search, but. Okay. So you pop up under. Word of mouth. Yeah. Possibly from, I'm trying to get my name out there through friends, uh, LinkedIn, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. All right. But, well, it, but it is, it yeah. is hard to market yourself as a small business. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. Well, we have talked about your collegiate club career in water polo and we've talked about your business. Um, can you reflect a bit more, because you did mention it a couple of times, but reflect a little bit more about how your experience at, you know, Washington and playing club water polo has impacted your ultimate working career? How has it impacted it? I think that it's maybe be committed for the long haul, you know, follow through with my goals 
Um, because, you know, you can't quit in the middle of the game. Hmm. You have to keep pushing forward. Even when someone's pushing you underwater, you have to keep going. So I think in that way, it's taught me to be persistent and persuasive. Mm -hmm. Well, have you ever found yourself in a situation uh, where you stopped and you went, you know, I could draw from that, uh, whatever that is, uh, and I'm going to be able to, uh, you know, whatever that is from my college water polo career, and I'm going to be able to solve this situation. Has that ever happened? And if so, what was the situation and how did it help? I think that, you know, during water polo, things can get heated and uh, it's easy to, you know, get upset or get angry. And I learned by playing that sportsmanship is way more important than, um, you know, losing your temper, your cool during a game. Uh, like I said, keeping things light and, and joking around with your opponents is um, a good way to kind of keep things from crossing the line. So learning that sportsmanship, I think, has translated into my career by teaching me how to, to work with people and generally, I think that that's helped me a lot. All right. Well, many people in your position, uh, they get asked this question by interviewers to, uh, what would you say to your younger self? But I like to approach this the other way. Uh, in other words, what would college water polo Vicky say to private investigator Vicky today? Oh, wow. What would college water polo Vicky say to private investigator Vicky today? Huh. I think college water polo Vicky would have told private eye and Vicky is stay in better shape because <laughs> playing water polo now is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be good advice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, staying a little bit better shape would have been easier. The last game I played was pretty, pretty tough. I actually got nailed in the face and that was pretty hard. Um, no, I think in generally, you know, there, there are some dreams and goals that I never followed through with that I wish I could have done. I'm, I'm actually too old now to do them, but I think college water polo Vicky probably would have pushed a little bit harder and said, you need to follow through with that. Um, other than that, I think I'm pretty much where I saw myself. Well, that's a good for thing. The most part. That's a very yeah. good thing. So, uh, lastly, uh, Watching today, we have high school water polo players uh, and their parents who are looking at universities, and we have college water polo players who are looking at, you know, their potential careers after graduating. What pieces of advice would you give them about college water polo and the impact uh, it can have uh, on ultimate working careers? Well, I think that, you know, a lot of high school students want to gear towards a division one program. And that's kind of where they see themselves is just in this narrow line towards, you know, a few different programs. What I'd like to say to these young people is that there are a lot of opportunities at great universities that have club programs that allow you to do you know, amazing things in the academic world while also getting to travel and play water polo. So I think what I would say is, you know, broaden, broaden your view and look at some of these universities that have club programs or division three programs that their academics may be maybe even superior to some of the division one programs that students may be looking at. And, you know, having been able to do a sport and the Greek life and officer roles there and the community service that that provided along with going to a really good university set me up for success. And so that would be my advice. All right. Good advice indeed. And 
Uh, she followed up her career as a University of Washington national club champion uh, by founding her own private investigation firm. Vicky Balzarini has been my guest today on CWPA Remote. Vicky, thanks so much for uh, sharing your insights today. Thank you, George. It's my pleasure having you on the show. And until next time on CWPA Remote, this is George Gross Jr. wishing all of our viewers the very best in and out of the water.